All right. Hey, guys. Hey, everybody out there. Um, I'm Brian Ronalds uh, with Justuno. I am the director of agency partnerships. Um, hope everybody is doing well today and on this holiday uh, time uh, that we all love so much. Um, and again, um, we're going to wait a few minutes. Ideally, we'll probably begin in about two or three minutes. Um, but I want to do something a little different. Uh, first, first of all, um, if you have wonderful backgrounds, share your wonderful uh, holiday backgrounds. If you have outfits, put them on. You know what the heck. But uh, I want to in, instead of kind of going a little bit around um, and, and asking you all where, where you're calling from, I thought we'd do something fun, and um, I'm going to tell a couple Christmas jokes. And being a dad and all, uh, these 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 might. Uh, you know, be a little dad joke, but I don't know if you knew this, but did you all know um, how we could better wash our hands over the holidays? With, with sanitizer, of course, right? <laughs> <laughs> so don't forget that sanitizer. Um, and, and, and I don't know if you know the difference between the, the Christmas alphabet and the regular alphabet. Does anybody know the difference? Well, see, the Christmas alphabet, it has no L. <laughs> <laughs> good, good thing I only have a couple of minutes to do, to do a couple of these, but I, you know, um, my, my wife and I were talking last night and I asked her, you know, you know, what do you want for Christmas? She told me that, that, that nothing would make her happier than a diamond necklace. So I, I bought her nothing. <laughs> okay. All right. One more. All right. Most of you know who Drake is, right? You know, anybody you all know who Drake is? Um, but what you may not know is that he loves giving gifts so much. And it, and it turns out it's because he's a really good rapper. <laughs> All right, one more, and then we're going to introduce our guests. Um, for those who haven't joined us, um, you've heard some completely uh, horrible jokes uh, from yours truly. Brian Ronalds, the director of agency partnership to Just Do Know. Um, but uh, this morning, my kid wasn't feeling so good. And he said, you know what, Dad, I decided, you know, I I don't want to believe in Santa anymore. And you know what? He is just such a rebel without a clause. Kids. Um, all right. Here we go, guys. All right. We're going to introduce our guest today. Um, I'm going to switch back over here. Um, we have our wonderful and fantastic speakers. Couldn't be more happy to have them. We have Brandon, uh, Brandon from Optively. We have the wonderful Julia from Builder.io. Uh, the amazing Andrew from Senlane. And um, our Justuno's very own Zach Bailey. And from here, um, I guess we can take it away uh, with Brendan. Hi, um, Brian, thank you. And can I share a screen? Um, okay, cool. Let me do that again. All right. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, great to be here, Brian. Thanks for, thanks for having us. Um, so our conversation today is around performance without pixels. So how we are seeing agencies and their clients in 2021 um, surviving and hopefully more than surviving um, with the death of the cookie that is um, that is upon us. Um, we're Optily and um, we are a software solution that helps agencies and their clients to um, get a better return from their investments in, in paid media. Um, my name is uh, Brendan Hughes and I'm the CEO of Optily and uh, I've been in e-com and digital marketing for, um, I don't know, I'm going to stop counting, um, but for a long time and uh, I've been on both sides of the fence so I've spent a lot of my career kind of buying media and um, I've worked in a publisher when, with, with IAB in, um, in Europe, I'm based out of in Dublin, Ireland. Um, so I'm delighted to be with lots of you on the other side of the Atlantic today. Um, we put a book together um, earlier this year, which is really focused on how um, how to get a better return across the marketing funnel, kind of from 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 paid media. So um, you can check that out. I'll have a link at the end of the of the presentation around that. Um, and, and the problem that we're all acutely aware of in 2021 is um, and driven by lots of different things going on in terms of privacy and consent, but also the big platforms and the big players making big changes that are impacting on our ability to 
track things that we used to be able to track to get audience insights that we used to be able to get um, and really to understand what's happening um, especially if we're in the cross channel world so you know for advertising across the big walled gardens and life has just got a lot harder and um, so how are how are we seeing kind of people kind of addressing that um, and I guess the the perennial problem and um, that has that is not going away and um, that we're seeing is that uh you know understanding where to invest both our money and our time in order to get a better return across the marketing funnel has just got that bit harder and most marketers in 2021 are, are having problems with it and we, and we all kind of i think experience that um and i guess in, in talking about the marketing funnel um it, it, we're we're starting to hear a lot more people talk about it a lot more often um and and really in the performance marketing space and it's something that we kind of forgot about for a few years. And now it's kind of everyone's kind of back back in talking about it. And why is why is that? And why is it important in the context of, of trying to achieve performance without pixels? Um, and, and just overall, if we step back a little bit, the reason the funnel exists as a concept for over 120 years is that it, it reflects, um, regardless of whether a purchase is taking place in an instant or over a, kind of a longer period of time, it kind of reflects how um, consumers um kind of pass through the, the customer their purchase journey and um and really our role as marketers and advertisers is to help nurture people kind of through that and um, so we're doing different things at each stage of the funnel we're still um and as advertisers in particular we're really trying to find people when they're not on our platforms they're not on our email and they're not on our website and not receiving our sms's when they're elsewhere around the web how do we nurture them kind of through through the purchase journey and bring them to to our to buy from us um, and when thinking about this and, and thinking about the different stages of the funnel it impacts on what we do when it comes to audience building and audience segmentation because of course how we go and find people at the top of the funnel is very different to what we're doing with our audiences at the lower end of the funnel the creative copy and offers that we're using at each stage of the funnel are very different. So if we're trying to build awareness with people who are maybe are in market um, but are not ready to buy, there's very little point in putting a really kind of hard sell offer in front of them, right? Because it's not going to resonate with them. Um, similarly with platforms and placements, so some platforms are great at um, creating demand and others are great at kind of uh, delivering against that demand. And the goals and metrics that we measure, of course, will be different and how we allocate budget, you know, more budget at the top of the funnel for longer term growth, more budget at the lower end of the funnel for immediate sales returns. Um, and really where kind of this is leading to is when it comes to campaign optimization, then yes, what we are optimizing for at each stage of the funnel is, is going to be different. So at the top of the funnel, we're optimizing for yeah, maximum reach and visibility, but obviously with a qualitative metric that you know, we want to find people who are, would have a propensity to engage. Middle of the funnel, we're educating our audiences and we want to drive you know, high quality traffic to our websites. And of course, at the bottom of the funnel, we want to maximize our revenue and our profitability. Um, and this is probably where the biggest challenge has come in the last kind of nine to 12 months is and um, the numbers just don't add up the same way they used to. Um, and uh, how do we manage that across the different channels, kind of, kind of through the funnel? And what we're seeing agencies in particular doing, and the advices that we see them giving to their clients, are kind of in two broad buckets. So there's two things that kind of go hand in hand in glove. So the first is the move towards first party data, and um, we hear more of this from our um, from the other speakers today, and really moving away from the reliance on audience insights from these big platforms, because it's just not going to happen as efficiently um, in the future. And then coupling that with um, getting better ourselves at unifying the data from multiple sources so that we can then use it kind of in a timely manner. So I'm going to bring you through a little bit of that um, in terms of what we see kind of happening. So again, a reminder around what, what is first party data um, or, and there's a subset in here called zero party data. So we can flesh it out um, later as well. But it's, it's data that a company directly collects from customers um, or audiences with informed consent and which that company then owns. Okay, so it's your data, you own it. Um, and the informed consent bit we all know is important. So we can't just take data um, and collect data and, and use it in ways that we didn't tell people about and we didn't kind of ask for their permission to, to use it in. Um, 
And the kinds of data collection that we see is obviously all of the things that people do on our websites and our apps um, before they buy or maybe on their paths kind of to purchase. And the fact that they buy from us and they become customers and they're part of our, they sign up to our privacy policies, et cetera. And they, they really are customers that we can, we can speak with um, and we can use their data um, to, to, to market to them. Um, obviously, subscription and loyalty programs are great resources that, that companies have. And very often they, they, not that they, they can't, but somehow they struggle to kind of make the most use out of those and to use that um, great data and segment their audiences based on recency and frequency kind of models. Um, and uh, what we're seeing a lot of, and particularly in the advertising space, is, is the last two, a combination of email subscriptions and customer surveys and feedback. And, um, and, and why are they useful to us? Because very often we're uh, collecting data from um, people who are not yet our customer, but are demonstrating interest in our brand or demonstrating purchase intent. And the kinds of things that we um, we see from an advertising perspective that are very uh, useful ways to gather that kind of first party data is one in the ad platforms themselves. All of the platforms today have what they call lead gen kind of tools, but ways for us to gather kind of information and collect consent from people before they even come to our website. Um, and so it's very useful kind of environment to gather lots of kind of lots of lots of data. Um, uh, of course, then there's the, the list building activities that we see increasingly, you know, with either discounts or with some gamification built in. And um, again, they're very kind of um, useful ways to collect information where people have demonstrated purchase intent because hey there's a 10% off my first purchase okay I'm thinking about I'm really committed um or think at, sorry at least thinking about um buying so I'm committed enough to give them my email address um and then using that um to then go and talk to these people or to find more people who look like these people and then we're starting to see this kind of trend then towards um uh, uh, on-site surveys where we're now starting to try and find more information from consumers um that we can then use which is richer for us um, but then also then the customer is going to be achieving a more personalized experience or would expect to be achieving a more personalized experience in the back of that. And we get different levels of engagement from all of these different tactics. Um, and again, it's the combination of these, not just one or the other, um, but we see um, the more advanced brands using a combination of these kind of ways to, to gather data about customers before they uh, are good users, before they become customers. Um, and this is some research in, um, released this year from uh, Boston Consulting Group in conjunction with Google. And it was looking at what are the ways that um, agencies and brands are using um, this first party data and kind of achieving benefits from it. And, and the three kind of big headlines are really, one, it's about understanding consumer behavior better. And um, two, around audience targeting, um, of course, including kind of lifecycle marketing and personalization. And three, then around understanding campaign efficiencies or being able to kind of close the loop back in again. Um, and the good news is that um, where, where um, brands are using a combination of four or more of these, um, these tactics, they're seeing nearly kind of three times revenue growth than, than what they were seeing from, um, from, from not using kind of first party data. So, so we have the audience data and then we still, um, uh, and we still need to leverage that within the platforms, but also get a better, better performance and sweat the kind of the platforms in particular from an advertising perspective. So what we're seeing is this um, second kind of plank, which is around normalizing and consolidating the data from multiple sources to try and understand, kind of um, uh, get a better picture of the customer journey um, and, and, and how the, each platform is, and each marketing activity is contributing. And there are three pillars to this. One is that task of consolidating and normalizing data. So we're comparing apples with apples, right? Um, and that's kind of critical because um, the data we get from our ads platforms, from our analytics platforms and from our store, it doesn't line up and it never has. And we need to find a way to kind of start kind of um, putting those together. Um, and when we have that is using it to understand the relative contribution through the customer journey of each of the kind of marketing activities that we're engaged in. Um, and then critically to be able to action that, um, those insights in a, in a timely manner. Um, and, uh, and, and that's, that's, I guess that's the problem that we at Optally have tried to kind of address in particular is, um, is really focusing on this. And just very quickly in terms of what our, what our software does and how it kind of presents that. So in the first instance, um, and a little bit hard to see on this screen, but at the bottom here is a, um, a collection of ad campaigns from across the different ad platforms with, with data 
um, uh, attribution data from the ad platforms themselves, from Shopify or the e-com platform itself, and together with, for example, Google Analytics. Um, so starting to compare apples with apples and say, look, there's lots of different data points um, for this particular ad campaign. So we can understand kind of what maybe what it's contributing um, um, uh, um, to, to, to our objectives. Um, the second thing that we, we our platform does is it starts to organize things into a strategy. So into different stages of the customer journey or the marketing funnel or whatever you might, might want to call it itself. Um, and, uh, and then on the basis of that and the goals you have at each stage of the customer journey, our platform starts to make recommendations in particular around investment in terms of where to spend in order to get kind of a better return. Um, and the great news is that this kind of approach in terms of better budget management can have immediate impact. Adam is one of our um, uh, uh, customers I like to talk about because within 14 days, he got this kind of supercharged um, growth just by better management and better structure of his ad strategy and better investment decisions um, on a daily basis. And, um, and you know, so, so there's, there's great results, not only in time saving, but also in terms of making sure you get the best returns from, from your advertising. Uh, so that's all I wanted to kind of talk to you about today. And um, if there's, the, the book is a, uh, published on Amazon, but you can download, download a copy of it um, on optically.com forward slash book um, if you'd like to. So thanks for listening. Awesome. Brennan, thank you very much. Uh, that was awesome. Um, you know what, I forgot to mention just a couple of housekeeping items that, that and I may have already, but the recording of this webinar, it's gonna be sent out tomorrow to all registrants alongside of special offers from our, our, from our panelists. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and use that Q&A function at the bottom of your screen to ask um, the questions at that point. And um, we'll try to get to those questions at the end um, of this presentation. But um, up next, we ready for Julia. We have Julia here. Um, from Builder.io, and I'm gonna let her take it away. I'm gonna take it away. Hello, everyone. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully everyone can see that. Now, I do not have a snazzy Irish accent. However, I am also very excited to speak with you all today. Um, so like Brian mentioned, I am here from Builder.io and, um, you know, we're pretty new uh, to the game, so maybe not everybody knows who we are, but we are actually the only drag and drop visual editor that integrates with any tech stack or platform. So, um, you know, when it comes to Shopify land, that's Shopify hosted or headless, but honestly, we integrate with anything you got. Um, so for an agency audience, super cool because you can kind of use the same tools across all of your customers. Um, now, because of that, um, you know, we work with a lot of different types of agencies because honestly, everyone is creating, um, you know, commerce experiences, whether it's a performance agency that's focused on landing pages and like that after the click experience, or whether it's obviously the dev shops on the other end that are building all these things, replatforming and all that jazz. So, um, you know, as head of partnerships, I've really had the fortune to speak with all these agencies and learn from them and hear the trends, as well as actually speak with other great technology companies in the space and, and learn from them as well. Um, and one major trend that I've been hearing about is that, you know, and actually I have a personal connection to this before we get into all of that. Um, I don't know about you, but since the pandemic has started, I haven't been shopping in person almost at all. And so this means that I'm online more and more. I'm visiting my favorite stores over and over again. And truthfully, um, I expect almost a new experience every time I jump in, right? Like if I'm going to Nike.com today and then two weeks from now, it's the same homepage. I'm like, oh, boring, right? And um, it, it seems like a lot of brands are kind of feeling that pressure. Um, from my conversations I've had with my agency partners, a lot of folks, um, their clients are shifting more in the direction of the retainer spend versus the one-off project spend because everyone um, on the brand side feels this pressure to constantly iterate and test. And especially, you know, it's not just about acquisition and bringing in new customers. It's also about retaining, um, you know, in the biggest part about retention is uh, showing that you understand your customers, right? It's launching new products that kind of resonate with them. It's showing a personalized experience that it's, it's like your favorite stores have to know you nowadays. And so, um, which is, 
awesome news for us as technology companies and for you as agencies, but it also means you're doing a heck of a lot more work than you had to do before uh, in spinning up these experiences and helping your customers test and all of that. And so the biggest thing we preach at Builder is this concept of reusability. And it's like, how do I design, create, build um, with that reusable reusability in mind and making sure I'm repurposing as much as I can across customers and within a customer kind of um, um, website, right? Um, and so that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Um, and we'll kind of jump into like what role Builder plays there. But first, I just want to talk about these like common use cases of what we see various agencies creating uh, from an experience perspective. You know, on one hand, I mentioned those performance marketing agencies and um, I don't like when you're shopping and I, I don't know, I'm a shopaholic. So I'm going to talk about myself shopping a lot. Hopefully it resonates with you all. But um there's nothing more frustrating than if I'm like on my little website reading my news and then this beautiful dress pops up and I'm like, oh man, I want to wear this to the wedding I have coming up. And like, and it's like this, you know, gorgeous model. And I'm like, ah, oh, maybe it'll look half as good on me, you know? And I click on it and I land on this page that doesn't even have the dress there or I have to scroll or whatever it is. Like maybe I'm on the home page. That is the most frustrating and disjointing experience that I've ever experienced. And it, unfortunately it happens all the time. And so um, there's such a huge pressure as brands are spending more on paid marketing across the different channels to have that cohesive after the click experience, which really means you have to, as an agency, be able to spin up tons of landing pages that are you know, shoppable and um, that really reflect that same story you're selling through the marketing. So that's on one side. Obviously, you know, CRO agencies are constantly doing these tests to optimize. It's like on a product page, maybe you're selling clean beauty, right? And um, to those customers, it's probably even more important to hear your brand story and hear how you're sourcing these like really clean ingredients and, um, you know, you almost have to like pull on the heartstrings a little bit because you know if they're shopping clean beauty that's what they care about right and uh you know you're gonna have to create and test all this different content below your product page because it's not enough to just show the beauty product now because all of your competitors are doing so much more right um and same goes with collection pages and obviously um design and development agencies kind of focus on the whole gamut and uh they're designing all these things in mind but you know, look at this image I have on my screen, right? It's just the collection of boxes. And that banner at the top of my homepage looks just like the banner at the top of my collection page. And so as an agency, you need to, like, you, you can't afford to not be thinking like, where can I repurpose this, like this block, right? Create a beautiful branded block, but then give your customers or your other team members the ability to just swap the image and repurpose that across the board. Why are you trying to reinvent the wheel well you need to start thinking modular and start whipping up content as quick as possible uh to be able to satisfy those that pressure that your customers need and um be able to take on more clients because you know the more you build the more you can bill your clients so build more build more right that's what we like to say um and so you know about this reusability from a few different perspectives, right? Um, one thing uh, which is really important is kind of designing responsibly. Um, right now, there's this huge effort on mobile first and everyone's talking about these mobile first experiences. You want everything to be super performant. You don't want 50 different category call outs. Um, you know, as you're uh, scrolling through your phone, you're not gonna flip to any of that. You have like two seconds to grab your customer and get them to shop, right? So there is a need for bespoke experiences by device type, but you have to be designing responsibly um, just for your own sake, right? So with Builder, um, for example, uh, we have these kind of like three preview modes, right? You can design as if you are on desktop, tablet or mobile and your styles will always cascade down but then at the same time you know we give you the option of kind of creating bespoke experiences across those different types so yes you have the flexibility but also you're not designing three separate designs every single time because that is a waste of time and that's the opposite of what we're trying to do um, and one other really really important thing that we at builder 
I think is a huge value prop of ours is we allow you to surface uh, your own code components, register them and surface them for your customers or your other team members to reuse over and over again. So what that means is you're probably creating some kind of awesome bespoke experience. It's probably branded, it's probably really unique and really cool, um, but then, you know, let's say you created it for the home page and now your customer is like oh man i want it on my product page too or i want it here i want it there right instead of having to recode redevelop all of that um in builder we let you surface it as a button in our ui just like you know an image block or a button block or whatever and then your end users or your team can just drag it on and a B test and do whatever it is that you want. Um, and so that's a major thing. We obviously, I, as I mentioned, we integrate with any tech stack or platform within Shopify. It's clearly liquid, uh, but you know, you can always register your view, react, et cetera, components everywhere you go. So um, that's something that uh, I think is pretty unique to builder, but again, it's in that whole um, camp of reusability and uh, having starting points to just really make things easier. Um, the other two things that we've seen um, popping up more and more in the landscape is this concept of templates and symbols. So templates, we all know, obviously Shopify provides a bunch of those out of the box. You're probably creating those for your uh, customers, but templates are starting points, right? Like you wanna drag that in, edit it, do whatever, um, and kind of, kind of get yourself a leg up to where you're getting started. Whereas symbols are something uh, even more impactful, I believe. So it's like, you know, um, banner right and we're like ooh, say 50 percent off cyber i'm oh, sorry black friday okay and you have it on every single page and then you know three days later super fun even we need a higher discount 80 percent off cyber monday who wants to go to every single page where that banner lives and change it nobody that is a waste of time and so symbols are something that's managed centrally and then shot out across the board and uh, we find them to be a great way of um, really saving yourself time and being reusable and adaptable um the last thing that i love 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 about builder as a solution for agencies is the fact that you can use this stuff across your client um I, I don't know, you've probably realized for yourself that every homepage for every e-commerce brand looks kind of the same. Yes, they have beautiful bespoke designed elements, all of that. Like I'm not taking anything away from them. All the work you do agency is gorgeous. But what I'm saying is it's all a header with some text and a button and then some columns and then some products, you know, like it's all the same. And so why not a Create like this component library that you can share across all of your customers, whether they're on Shopify, whether they're not on Shopify, and really create something that saves you time and is most efficient. So um, that's kind of what we preach. I just wanted to show you one of our customers. This is Everlane's homepage. Uh, the blue boxes there are different um, kind of components that they've created within Builder. And these modules were created by their design and development teams. Um, and then now their end users, the merchandisers, take them in and restack them and then say, okay, instead of gifts for her, like, okay, it's now January 1st, no one's sending gifts anymore. Let's change it to spring dresses and vacation and whatever it is. Swap the image, swap the text, boom, you're ready to go, right? And, um, you know, Everlane is somebody we're really, really proud to work with because they really believe in this concept of reusability. I think they're such a star in that. And um, it's so funny, this homepage um, that I use, I put this deck together two weeks ago. If you look at their homepage today, it looks completely different because now with Builder, they're able to move super, super fast and create all these custom experiences. And um, actually we did a really awesome um, uh, case study with them where they're now able to launch products four times faster because they don't have that reliance of like, all right, to create this new homepage, we're going to have to have four weeks of like, whatever. It's going to be put in the, what do you call it? The Jira, all the things where the developers have their backlog and all of that. Like you no longer have to worry about that. And that's important, not just for brands, it's important for agencies too, right? Like a, you want to be able to really empower everybody to carry their own weight because the reality is um, at an agency, the developers have a lot of work to do to create a lot of the parts of these experiences. And so why not help the marketers, the merchandisers, the designers carry some of that weight. So um, that's basically what I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, just really as you're planning for 2022, think about how you can 
repurpose what you're doing and save yourself time and work most efficiently. And of course, I would love to work with you. So reach out to me uh, at Builder and uh, see if we can create some magic together. Thanks, guys. Julia, thank you. Um, appreciate your enthusiasm and authenticity. Fantastic. Oh, that's me. Cheerleader style. <laughs> I love it. All right, moving on. Um, we have uh, Andrew from Sendling. Uh, ready to take it away? Excellent. I'm. I'm. I was born ready, Brian. Um, right. Massively, uh, massively appreciate the introduction, uh, Brendan and, and Julia, and, and we'll also see uh, Zach here. Really, what we're talking about is, is a full funnel experience for every single, uh, every single client uh, that you're working with on the agency side. And uh, my background um, is, so I'm the Vice President of Strategic Partnerships here at Sendlane, um, a fast growth ESP um, that, that serves both email and SMS. Um, really what this presentation is about is about tips and trends uh, that, that are relevant right now and that are, are going to remain relevant and impactful for all of 2022. Uh, with the first theme really being unified commerce. Now, now we've we've heard uh, the CEO of Big Commerce talk about this. We've heard the, the CEO of Shopify talk about this. This is this is is not a confusing topic. Um, and really, when we're talking about what Julia just presented, what Brandon just presented, all of this is based off of how do we understand unified data? How do we utilize components across channels more effectively? And the same is true for email and SMS. They belong united um, for the most effective growth. So really, um, and uh, Sendlane Poe launched. Um, so how much revenue do your clients drive from SMS and, and email marketing on average? Um, this is something we'll see what the results are relatively shortly. Um, in 2022, uh, multi-channel strategy will sparkle. Um, so, so what can you do from the agency side in, in order to ensure that, that you are being as proactive um, in, in, in this multi-channel strategy? So unifying email and SMS um, creates a better customer experience. Um, and will also increase brand loyalty across, um, across the brands that you're working with in your portfolio. Um, next up, make sure pr to provide and, and understand VIP segments um, in order to get give them real perks. So some of those perks could be uh, early access to sales, uh, sneak peeks um, to new collections, um, and, and exclusive bundles, and, and ensuring that you are providing a better experience for those that are spending the most, those that are engaging the most, um, those that are more likely to buy and to buy more and at a higher frequency and a higher customer lifetime value. Um, adjust your brand voice per channel. Now, as a consumer, I love a, a variety of, of different brands. And while the, the average consumer um, has about four um, brands on SMS, um, as, as a specific channel, more so, uh, the, the reason why more people don't utilize SMS more widely is because of the voice and because of this disconnectedness um, between the relationship that they have already established, maybe for months, maybe for weeks, um, maybe for, for years, um, through email, through social, through other channels, um, and, 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 and SMS not actually properly integrating into those altogether. So be sure that when you're speaking to somebody on the SMS channel that you're also cognizant that they're a part of your larger ecosystem. Um, be sure also that you are speaking to folks how they want to be treated on different channels um, to give them the best possible experience. And then as paid media moves to audiences, um, and, and, and we're talking about the, the, the privacy changes uh, that are taking place and are continuing to take place. Um, really, understanding data becomes more and more important as Brendan was un, uh, 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 underscoring, but most importantly, make sure that you're doing things strategically in order to still build your engagement properly across channels. 
Um, one of the things that you could do is you could take all unsubscribed segments and you could retarget them across your paid media channels in order to reactivate them, re-engage them, bring them back into the fold, back into your funnel um, and back active on your channels. Um, grow your zero and first party data. We talked about surveys. Um, we talked uh, next up, Zach's going to be talking in depth about list growth in particular. Um, but really this first party data has always been a critical component of growing a powerful DTC brand. And you can look at that from 10 years ago from, from some of the fastest growing brands that have gone out, of, out into the stratosphere. That first party data is king by far. Um, but luckily today, it matters to everyone. It matters to brands. It matters to the clients that you're working with on a day-to-day -day basis. So as an agency, make sure that you have a first-party data and a zero-party data strategy. Um, look into doing surveys. Make sure that list growth is a top tier consideration and that you're collecting as much information about your customers on a or, or your brand's customers on a regular basis so that you can retarget, um, so that you could build profiles and so that you can create a better experience for them across the board. Um, and then lastly, think cross channel for messaging and creative. And I, I love this because really Julia was underscoring this with Builder.io just for your on-site experience and the continuity that you can have between the ads that you're serving. Um, in addition to that, um, it, take your very best um, uh, subject lines and, and utilize them on paid media channels. Um, take your very best and most compelling calls to action on ads and utilize them um, within other messaging channels. Really, in 2022, all the best will test, test, test. And in and, and talking to agencies and, 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 and your uh, ecosystem that, that you live, sleep, and breathe, you obviously have a testing methodology in place as it stands today. Um, so what else can you test or what should you be testing um, with each and every brand that you're working with in order to maximize their customer's experience and give them the biggest bang for their buck, um, get them to perform at a higher level so that they are, are better retained by you um, and they have you to thank for their growth. Um, one is SMS versus MMS messaging. Um, so I have been super deep um, in SMS since, since it originally came uh, up as kind of a new service function. Um, and initially, obviously, after we moved beyond Twilio um, to some of the standalone technologies, um, immediately what we saw was, was mirroring of capabilities that happen in email. And it's an interesting consideration. Most of us in email marketing, um, we believe strongly um, that a beautiful creative, um, compelling creative goes a long way. And that still remains true and relevant in text. However, is it relevant for every single message? Is it crucial for every single message? Um, it's something that you should test for your particular brand um, and types of messages that you're sending out. Um, because you'll find and you'll be able to better organize uh, what messages are going to be served better as an MMS, um, versus an S SMS and, and uh, uh, every step along the way. Um, starting different automations with text versus email as a point of entry. So um, uh, SMS and, and text has really taken a hold of the marketplace in an interesting way and kind of risen up um, to uh, compete heavily with email um, in many ways um, rather than working together with it. However, when we're thinking about creating automations for our client base, um, one of the things that's really critical is, 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 is text better for this or is email better for this? Or in automations or triggered messages, um, does it make sense to start with SMS versus email? Um, and this can be different according to your audience, according to the way that they engage, and according to what you're actually messaging based off of these triggers. For card abandonment, it might make sense for SMS or, or text to go first, um, and then to follow up a few hours later with email, um, and then come back with an additional text if or as needed. 
Um, but for other automations uh, where it's more a part of like the post-purchase series, for example, perhaps following up with email makes a lot more sense. Um, and then you could follow up with text for a review um, and then follow up with another email for a more, more indoctrination along the way. So think about um, how you can utilize them together and then also make sure to test which should go first, um, text or email. One of the coolest, newest emerging features actually just announced last week um, by a company called Zimbula, who does live email or live content within email, is actually live content within uh, MMS. Um, so being able to dynamically populate content based off of your audience um, and, and what they're seeing and have it immediately related, so animated um, GIFs as well as personalized messaging within um, the MMS channel um, is going to be something that I think that we'll see a lot more of um, as this technology becomes a little bit more uh, ingrained. Um, punchy copy and beautiful creative and plain text um, messages. So I kind of am, am going to bundle these together a little bit because if, if you're dominantly doing heavy copy, long form sales copy for your client base, then I would highly encourage you to take a step back and actually start working on uh, beautiful templates um, with strong, creative, uh, punchy, brief copy. Um, one, one rule of thumb for email in general is uh, what we call the three second rule. So in three seconds, folks are going to make a decision on whether or not they're going to scroll through your email, they're going to click through your email, or they're going to skip to the next email. So make sure that they can get the message that you're trying to deliver to them as best as possible and as quick as possible. And oftentimes, um, creative is going to be the difference maker. However, um, plain text also has its place. If you're mostly all heavy in creative, um, and, and heavy in design across the board, then, then having a particular emails that are either a letter from the CEO, a letter from the founder, um, a, a letter from, from, from your, your D, head of DEI or, or, or some leader in your organization, um, that is something impactful that your brand is doing, whether or not it's, it's a partnership, uh, which is the next thing I'll, I'll be discussing here, or it's a, a new new product bundles or launches or a VIP special exclusive offer can go a long way in that these emails can hold more gravity if they're different than the norm of what is being received on a regular basis. So, so keep in mind um, that plain text can go a long way and shouldn't be excluded, um, but simultaneously um, test um, and think through what the best options and potentiality is. And then lastly, agency-led brand partnership collaborations. So, so testing, um, everybody who worked with influencers five, six years ago, what, what they were doing is they were doing a pure numbers game, right? So you're contacting as many influencers as possible if you were using micro-influencers. Um, and you were trying to figure out who's performing, who's not performing, um, how cheap will they actually go for. But today we're in an era and an age where content creators rule the world. TikTok has more view time than YouTube does presently today um, on a daily basis. And what that means is that make sure that, that you're partnering um, with the right content creators on a regular basis with your brand and that these content creators are creating the content that is going to drive your user generated content forward, that's going to drive your brand messaging forward, that's going to drive the right kind of customers um, to, uh, to the brands that you're working with on a regular basis. Um, and then thirdly, or, or in addition to that, um, for partnerships, um, consider brand collaborations. So as agencies, you're in a unique position in that you're working with an array of clients um, that, that may or may not serve similar audiences. And so if it makes sense for one brand to partner with another brand um, to fill gaps um, in, in, in their needs or to actually market to each other's client bases, 
in order to create better synergy and more revenues over the long term. These are connections that you can make on your behalf. And this is, isn't just something that, that you can or that you would orchestrate on your own, though you heavily can. A, another thing that, that is a major trend right now is um, partnering in a deeper ways across brands. There, there's another technology called Caro, Get Caro, um, that it is, is, is a relatively new and allows the capability for, for Shopify brands in particular to actually choose from 30,000 other Shopify brands products and they could you could create bundles and they'll handle fulfillment. So it's like drop shipping and, and, and the flattening of marketplaces into the Shopify ecosystem. Um, so taking a step back and going through trends here a little bit more heavily, um, assuming if you're on the call here today uh, that your agency is in the e-commerce space, but really uh, the trends are red hot right now. Um, the e-marketer predicts e-commerce revenues to exceed $1 trillion for the first time um, in 2022. So this is going to be a, a monumental and record setting year. I know we just had 2022, 2021's throwing some wild cards at us. Um, but 2022 is going to be uh, powerful um, in many ways, not least of which is, is, is revenue. Um, next up, privacy is forever. So, so one of the things that I like to quote regularly is that in January of 2021, Tim Cook said um, that privacy is just as important or it, privacy is the most, one of the most important issues of the, this century right up there with climate change. And Tim Cook cares about climate change um, and he obviously cares about privacy. And, and with most of the most effective um, or the highest purchasing consumers um, purchasing on Apple devices, um, it should be considered that privacy is forever, but, but that doesn't make it so that you cannot personalize. So, so do everything that you can to still create that custom experience, still personalize every single step of the way, and note that people care about their privacy. So respect that, follow the regulations, um, and encourage um, the brands that you work with to do so as well, because this is something that's going to be more and more of an issue. And as we see cookies disappear and we see more and more changes uh, with the changing guards of, of social media landscape, um, privacy is going to be an issue that is not going to go away. So adapt um, however you can. Uh, buy now, pay later is here to stay. And I've always been bullish on this, Affirm, Afterpay, Quadpay, Klarna, um, for, for quite a while. Um, I believe that this is a utility that, that each and every brand should have. Um, if you're working on the agency side and your clients are not utilizing buy now, pay later options on their site, um, it's something to encourage depending on their price points because it can speed up velocity because you're the customers of the brands that you're working with have relationships with these vendors in some way, shape, or form, and you could speed up the velocity. And that's also to mention what is the busy, biggest signal that it's here to stay forever, um, that shop pay actually has buy now, pay later options today. So if, if they're using shop pay, yes, they have that velocity, but does it make sense for them to also use Klarna and maximize their marketplace um, and other technologies that are adjacent to it? Um, so to figure out how they can make more revenue, which speeds up velocity, which makes things easier, which makes more revenue for the client, which hopefully helps them to retain you for a longer period of time. Um, barriers to entry are shattered in the marketplace today. Um, there's more new businesses arising right now um, that, than have um, in, in history. Um, and, and this is something that I believe is really a trend that is persistent, the, the, the rise of the merchant class um, as really being how we're moving our economy forward from here on out. Um, 10 years ago, if you wanted to, if, if your clients wanted to start uh, an e-commerce business, um, they would have to spend tens of thousands of dollars uh, to barely get off the ground and plan to run it like a retail operation where they're, we're losing money for a pretty prolonged period of time. 
Today, um, you could get sites up and running with great velocity. You can get a lot of the tech stack that we're talking about here today for relatively inexpensive on a monthly basis. Um, and, and these brands can really get put together and launched um, faster than they ever could before in history. Um, think conscious capitalism. And this is something that I'm particularly uh, particularly care about. And I, and, and I do think is a trend across brands that from an agency side needs to be strongly considered. Um, does it make sense to recommend uh, your clients work with a company like Shopping Gives? Um, are they carbon neutral? Are they including messaging about how they care for the environment um, in, in on their sites and uh, in their emails, in their SMS, um, in their advertisements? Um, is it built in as a part of their business model or could it be in some way, shape or form, once again, to increase velocity, to build with values of the clients and to stand out as a brand um, during this time when, when, when there is a lot of competition. And then lastly, on the trends, marketplaces are truly democratized. I mentioned a little bit about um, Get Caro actually helping to democratize for D2C land, um, but every business really stands today in e-commerce versus Amazon. Um, and, and that's going to remain true for a little while longer here, um, probably pretty persistently. Um, but one of the considerations for that also is that we have Amazon. Um, we have the decentralization of marketplaces from Amazon to Walmart, uh, to Instacart, to Target.com, and to all of these other ways, shapes, and forms that people are, are now shopping in that, that maybe they weren't prior to 2020, um, but they definitely are now. Um, and there are alternate ways that your brand could get in front, or the brands that you work with could get in front of their clients. If not, there should be a specific strategy um, that you have in place to actually fight against them. And then lastly, um, topic-wise, um, coming full circle, um, in 2022, email and SMS um, will unite. You've already seen this trend happen. It may already be something that you're enacting for your client base as we speak right now. Um, but really, why is it happening and, and why is it something that you should encourage um, for each and every one of your clients? Um, really, it's the e-commerce customer experience. And so once again, if we look at Zach's presentation next um, from Just Do Know, you're going to see a, a lot of these capabilities are about creating a better experience for your client. Um, if you look at Julia, exactly what she's talking about with Builder.io is creating a better customer experience. If you look at Brendan, it's about better understanding your data to create a better e-commerce customer, customer, e -commerce customer experience. So this is the central theme that we're looking at here. Um, and, 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 and uniting email and SMS is one of those components that, that will unify it. So making um, customers go from feeling used to valued. If you get the same message, if, if you purchase something from a brand and then you receive an additional like card abandonment email offering a discount that maybe you didn't even receive um, shortly thereafter, then you feel like you were taken advantage of. That's a horrible experience and, and you may never respond again. Um, similarly, if you're even if it's not an offer or something alternatively, if you're receiving multiple messages that are completely disjointed, um, it, it 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 is it is an uncomfortable experience for a consumer. It's a bad experience, and, and it's going to lead to higher unsubscribe rates. It's going to lead to a leaky bucket problem um, for the brands that you're working with. Hey, and Andrew, then, thank you, thank you so much. Um, we, we are way close to being over, out of time. We've leave, we're leaving poor Zach with eight minutes left here. And uh, we definitely have a few more slides left before we can get through this presentation. But um, we appreciate all the wonderful information, a ton of food for thought. Um, next is uh, Justino, Zach Bailey. And Zach, why don't you take it away? Thanks so much. And, and I just want to uh, reiterate that better e-commerce experience andrew hit the nail on the head and to me when i work with agencies and provide strategy uh for on-site uh cro uh, messaging and conversion messaging that's what it's all about that's a huge competitive separator uh that agencies can provide um that better uh experience and so again andrew mentioned with our uh 
uh, lead capture experience here. So create those opt-in flows that make sense for those visitors um, to provide genuine uh, value. So what are we speaking to there? Again, a better e-commerce experience. We're talking about relevant messages to relevant visitor journeys. That's always going to help you as an agency to grow that list, um, to make your list growth look that much more impactful and provide that ROI. I just urge and ask, do you have an on-site strategy that's helping to improve uh, that list growth strategy that you have with your email service provider or your SMS provider, as well as uh, your uh, ad spend team, right? Um, so think about uh, using the tap to text for your heavy uh, mobile uh, accounts that you have. If you have accounts that you see a large amount of Instagram traffic uh, coming to the site, if you don't have the tap to text for them, I highly recommend you investigate that. Uh, as that'll be extremely beneficial to improving that e-commerce experience, okay? Gamification with lead capture is huge. Do you have an opportunity where you've seen your list growth plateau? Have you used gamification? Just Uno uh, can provide you with multiple options. And if you visit our Just Uno template library, you will see a lot of our uh, different templates within that library for you to explore with your clients. And then at that point, it's just going to be uh, brand identity updates. Again, where does Just Uno fit into, fit into this uh, uh, you know, better e-commerce uh, experience? Well, we're the middleman. We have tons of integrations. We integrate with all of our partners here. And if you have an integration uh, question, please surface that with our team. We're extremely agile. Um, but just know that that's what Just Uno is here to provide as far as value is that we're uh, the middle uh, tech partner that's able to send that information to different sources. Um, again, which part of the uh, visitor journey um, are you going to introduce information and uh, direct messages to? Are you speaking to your return visitors? I love when Andrew said uh, to target those visitors that have unsubscribed. Well, with the use of UTMs, you can then uh, have a specific message that's directed on site to just that visitor uh, source. And then you can, with our uh, technology here, uh, gather more information through hidden fields like uh, traffic source, like page opted in. And then again, we're feeding that data back into uh, Optily, and that's where you're really creating a better e-commerce experience. So Andrew, thank you for uh, just kind of giving me a, a wonderful theme to stand on. Again, pulling in specific keywords or phrases to populate uh, for that seamless experience. Again, if you are seeing visitors that are triggered from your uh, top level or your prospect marketing, again, emphasize that on site. It works, but also you're going to be able to uh, a, B test on site, and what is that impact towards your conversion? The bottom line is your clients, like all clients, we care about conversions. We care about ROI, and that's where we're going to make that impact as we uh, provide that seamless experience, pulling in uh, Google AdWords, uh, UTMs from uh, SMS campaigns, um, you know, email campaigns, and then gathering that specific visitor source information to help further optimize that journey. One of my best advices is uh, if you're working with a client and they're focused on uh, reducing cart abandonment, uh, using banners that surface that they have a uh, free shipping threshold as three as free shipping is going to be one of the best strategies to reduce items being left in cart. A lot of, uh, you know, these brands out here don't have the margin uh, to offer free shipping. Well, if you're providing uh, those visitors on your site with at least an option that they can get to from an AOV perspective, uh, that is in, in itself a competitive separator as well as a great experience to know that that option is available. A, B, test. A, B test, this goes back to providing better data. This provides uh, for you to have a better creative strategy like Julia mentioned, um, and as well as understanding what works best for your visitors. As marketers, we can always give you benchmarks, but the key is to understanding that client's visitors and that account and what works best for them. A simple update to an image um, or maybe a, a CTA can go a long way. 
Uh, again, with our audience sync feature, uh, you're able to uh, collect more first party data that is going to be the theme that you're gonna hear over and over in 2020 uh, too. Hash synced emails, maintain that privacy. Uh, of course, what Tim Cook said just rings so true and have those ideal traits so that you're able to then gather that first party data and have a better opportunity for creating those lookalike audiences within your uh, paid social media uh, platforms here. And you can see how we're taking a look at a great uh, e-commerce experience all the way from the trigger marketing here at the top um, to upon landing. And these are the type of strategies that will help you to uncover here at Just Uno. Thanks for the time. Thanks for allowing us to uh, help your agencies out. And please reach out to any of our partners here uh, Thank you. Zach, you're amazing. Oh my gosh, I appreciate it. Um, that was speedy, but chock full of information. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, am I sharing my screen? No, but um, thank you all. Um, it looks like we have about 30 seconds for questions, which means um, no Q&A today, but thank you all for joining. Um, and, and thank all of the panelists. I appreciate you, Brendan from Optoly, uh, Julia from Builder.io, Andrew from Sendlane, uh, Zach from Just Do Know. Just remember, uh, the recording will be sent out tomorrow and you all have a very safe and happy holiday and um, look forward to hitting the ground running in 2022. Happy holidays. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you.